Hello and welcome to a little bit of a bonus video for the Minecraft series. All this is, a nice quick little video, is I just thought I'd add something a little bit fun to our Minecraft clone thing. This is completely unnecessary and it's not going to affect the main tutorial, so if you don't do this, it's not going to affect anything, don't worry about it. And all we're going to do is, I, s I recently saw a video on a Minecraft mod, I think it was RL Craft or something, it was like a hyper, super hardcore version where you got killed by pretty much everything. And it had this cool chunk loading effect where uh, the chunks sort of slid up from, I don't know, hell <laughs> to um, into place as they loaded. And it seemed like a fairly simple thing to implement, so I just thought I'd do a, a nice little video on how we could do that in hours. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to our scripts folder and we're just going to create a new script and we'll just call it chunk load animation on the fourth or fifth attempt of typing. Load that up. So we don't need to store any variables on where the chunk starts because we know on where the chunk's going to because we know that all the chunks are sat at zero. Obviously, if you're implementing this and you've done maybe a two chunk height system, you're going to have to work a little bit harder on this one. But if you implemented your own two chunk height system, I'm sure you're smart enough to do this. So what we're going to do, we'll go straight for our update and our start. And the first thing we want to do is we need to shift our chunk down to, I don't know, it just wants to be off screen. So let's just say transform.position equals new vector three. And we want to keep the same X and Z transform.position dot X transform.position dot Z. And then for the Y in the middle here, we'll say mm, how tall are our chunks oh you know what let's just say it will voxel data dot chunk height but minus so basically what this is going to do is when this this script is run it's immediately going to shift the transform of the game objects it's attached to and it's going to be attached to a chunk down so that the top of the chunk and, and bearing in mind the top isn't the terrain the top is like in the sky to where the bottom of the chunk is and then as the update runs all we're going to do is move it upwards so we'll say transform dot position equals uh, we'll go vector three dot lerp our starting position is wherever we are now and our finishing position is you know what let's just for the ease we're gonna we are gonna store the uh, the value so vector 3 target pause and then target pause is going to equal transform dot position before we modify it and then obviously target pause is going to be our target pause and we'll just use time dot delta time for now and well we'll put a we'll put a value here float speed and we'll say we'll say one after now and we'll modify that as as we need so time speed the thing about lerp is it kind of slows down as it gets near to its target so what we could do is we could either swap lerp for move towards which is a steady straight linear acceleration not acceleration movement or we could just do a little check if target dot uh, target pause dot y minus transform dot position dot y is less than i'll just stick some brackets around that for neatness is less than zero point let's say zero five f so once it gets within zero point zero five f we're close enough that we don't need to carry on lerping so we will then say transform dot position equals target pause and then destroy transform dot game object you might be able to just type game object there i'm not sure but either way this will work so basically as soon as this uh, script runs it's going to shuffle the game object down to like minus 128 or whatever our chunk height is uh, i can't remember and then it's going to lerp the position upwards and then when it gets to almost where it needs to be which will be at the height of zero it's going to set it to that position so that we're in the definite right place and then it's going to destroy itself so a quick and dirty way to implement this is we're going to go into our chunk script and we're going to go down to where are we here populate voxel map and just after we've added it to the chunks to update we're going to we should have a game object do we have do what i call it chunk object chunk object so we're going to get our reference to our chunk object and we're going to say add component what did i call it chunk load animation there we go so what this is going to do is it's going to add this as soon as it's finished generating the chunk it's going to add this object to it let's just test it and see how it looks 
As you can see, they're all sliding up into existence there. It's a really weird effect. <laughs> The, uh, the reason that, that, that they all disappeared then is because I destroyed the game object and not the actual... I didn't want to destroy the game object, I wanted to destroy the script. So if I change that to this instead of game object, hopefully that, will, that won't destroy the world as we know it. So as you can see, we have a lot of... Ooh, that's weird. All the chunks are, are sliding up into place and now they're not destroying themselves. And if we just pick a chunk at random, we can see that there is no script on it because once it's slid up into place, it destroys itself, it gets rid of itself because we don't want it constantly running for no reason. So what we'll do now is first off, we'll make it a little bit faster, but also it looks a bit bland with them all sliding up in time with each other. So let's make it so that they sort of come up at different times. So we're gonna hit a value here, which we'll call Float wait timer. At the start, we're going to say wait timer equals random dot range. And let's say difference in time between, we'll say not F, so some could slide up immediately, and 3F. Let's see how that looks. And then we need another value just called, not flowet, just called timer. And then with timer, we'll do a check here. If timer is less than wait timer, Then timer plus equals time dot delta time. So every update frame that timer is not greater than wait timer, we're just going to increment timer. So that basically counts up. So let's say wait timer was set to three. If this is less than three, then it's going to increment it by, you know, time. And then when it hits three, that's when we get into the else. And the else is just going to be all of this. So let's see how that looks. Kind of cool. And that's it. That is the thing that I was going to do. I did say it was going to be a very short one. Like I say, it's a bonus one. It doesn't matter if you want to add this to your game or not. It's not going to affect anything else. Nothing I do in future is going to be dependent on any of the code that's written here, except for maybe other bonus videos that will also be optional. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.